All right, the wisdom dialogue of the Rise Creating Your Voice podcast. As we stated before, here at 9 o'clock Central Standard Time, we were going to have a father to son interview. Well, as you see, I have my biological father, which is the Reverend James Curtis Sims Sr., the pastor of the Greater Tabernacle Ministries here in Jackson, Mississippi, who will be interviewing me. Let's give a round of applause for Reverend James Curtis Sims Sr. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. What? Welcome to The Rise. We on? Can you see him? I see him. Okay, we'll just go ahead. Oh, we, we, we recording this? Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. All of you that's out there in... Uh, Facebook Live. We appreciate you for being a part of us. Jeremy, better known as Jeremy, but he called himself Judah Bernard, but his former name is Jeremy Bernard, named after my father, J.B. Sims Sr. We certainly appreciate you being a part of us, and I know you're waiting on us to uh, go into our uh, interview, or whatever you might call it, or whatever it is, but we just really want to just do God's will. I want to show you that you can have conversation between each other, whether it be family or friends. You need to learn how to conversate. Yes. So with that being said, quick question for you. Oh. Uh, what are some of the your earliest memories? As, well, still, some of your earliest memories. Um, some of my earliest memories as a child um, definitely um, being that um, we lived in Jackson, Mississippi, um, just supporting my younger brother um, and my younger sister, who was at that particular time six months and two years old. Um, um, one of my other earliest childhood memories is um, you coming to Chicago and picking us up, um, saving us from um, a situation in which we were brought into as well, and I thank you for that. Um, some of my other childhood memories are October 31st, 1982, when all of us actually joined church at Mount Zion Cosville Missionary Baptist wow. Church. October 31st? Yes. Wow. We got baptized on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that, that was a great memory for me um, um, because um, it was like we were at um, Revival, and we actually got on the morning bench, and we all got baptized that Sunday. October 31st in 1982. Wow. Yes. Um, so that was a great memory. So I, we accepted Christ, um, the, the, the five of, it was five of us, six, five of us during that time. Right. And um, we all went up there together, um, four boys and one girl. <laughs> so it was, it, it was quite interesting for me that we all did it at the same time. Um, regardless that of what we've been going through and things that we went through, that we all accepted Christ together. And that was a great memory that I had. Um, so those are some of the earliest childhood memories that I, I love and I appreciate. Wow. Um, and I want to, you know, just continue to keep those inside of me because um, in talking with my sister earlier, she was like, oh my gosh, you have a great memory. So I think me asking God for wisdom and knowing that God instilled wisdom in me, mm -hmm. where I have this great memory to remember so many things and it's, 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 it's powerful, but then again, it can bring back some sorrowful memories. But with God, I know that my victim becomes my victor. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm the 10th child. Mm -hmm. and I know what it feels like to be a 10th child, but to be a 4th child, what does it feel like there any variables or any differences? Well, being the fourth child, <laughs> um, you counted because it was two boys ahead of me. What? Um, three. Well, boy, a girl, a girl ahead of me, and two boys. Right. So it was sort of like you think, like, okay, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. Because now you have one, two, three, and then after the fourth, it's sort of like, hey, I'm just here. <laughs> so um, I kind of. Hid in the shadows most of the time, 
um, and really looked up to my brothers and my sisters at that particular time because pretty much those three ahead of me kind of paved the way for me to start directing myself or lingering to the path that they took as well. well you, you talk about your memories, but then memories create traits or things to govern or direct you. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the most memorable traits that you really picked up? Some of my memorable, memorable traits, and this can be from anyone, although uh, my father mentioned mm -hmm. that um, I was actually named after my grandfather, which is J.B. Sims Sr., which still derives my Judah Bernard and still um, um, comes from Jeremy Bernard too as well, which is my original name. One of the traits is um, that if you do write, write will follow. Mm -hmm. And that was one thing that stuck with me because the thing is, if you do write, you, you don't have to worry about anything. Right. Um, one good trait um, that stuck with me too as well was when you... When you, when you, when you know you're doing something that came from you, just stand. Like, and especially if you know if it's right, um, stand for what you know. And you know you have all the research, you've done everything, and you know it's supposed to be right. Nobody else can change it. Right. So just do right. That's another trait. One trait that I um, learned from you as well is just keep trying. Don't give up. Right. Um, regardless of what you go through, mm -hmm. and I know many people go through things in life, um, but no matter what you go through, just don't give up. Keep trying. Keep going. Um, if first you don't succeed, right. dust yourself off and try again. That's so that's one thing that I learned, which come to the whole forefront of I'm more happier now. I'm more Complete because number one that I was able to remove myself and kept and I kept trying because um, one thing that um, your mother, which is my the late Will Juanita Sims, told me that you're going to be great and that really stuck with me and I get kind of emotional when I talk about her because she was a very very good instrument in my life and. She know that when I get upset, she will hand me a piece of double mint bubble gum and she'll tell me to chew it to calm my nerves down. And she laid me down and rubbed my head. So we had some very intricate moments um, that nobody else knows. And I, I just, I really appreciate her because she was a very stern woman, but then she had the, 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 the spirit and the soul of an angel. Wow. Awesome. Uh Right, like you mentioned, if you do right, right will follow you. Uh, that that is one of my dad's JB Sims mm -hmm. saying. It's one of his saying he always says. Right. So that, that's in, in, in lieu of the fact that you name JB, you name that one first. So that that's integral. That's I, I, that's just real. Right. Now, what are some things that you uh, uh, some of the things that you did? that you think you might would want to change? Some of the things that I did, I wouldn't say not right, mm -hmm. but some of the things that I chose to do okay. um, was drink, okay. um, alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that I did was um, a lifestyle that was uncomfortable for me, mm -hmm. but in going in it, I, I was confused. Okay. Um, and in that confusion, um, I was caught up, and um, I think in, in some instances, I didn't know what to do, right. and then when you don't know what to do, you kind of go with the flow of what's going on, right. and that's what I did. I went with the flow of going on, and I, and I started loving people wrong. I started doing different things in me, and I was like, well, this is what it is, but I, I saw myself hitting brick walls all the time. Um, I saw myself always doing different things that were just not for me. So I start um, um, thinking like, what do I need to change? And I can only change for myself. And this is not going out to anybody that's out there because my thing is, it's not about religion. It's about your relationship with God. And it's just your individual relationship. Yeah, right. 
And also, only you know what's right, and God will tell you what's right. So you got to have it in your discerned heart and your discerned spirit, making sure that you're ready for whatever God has for you because he knows and will give you the desires of your heart. True. And you mentioned that, but now each individual has to know for themselves. And you really can't pattern after somebody else. You right. have to know for yourself. Yes. Now, the idea of that, and we, we teach this at Greater Time, not mm -hmm. about surrendering. Right. So the idea is surrendering to whatever your purpose is in life. And that was very interesting that you said those things, but because of you being confused and not conversating then or knowing how to conversate then caused you to continue to do some of those things. So that's good for people like that. There might be somebody out in uh, Facebook Live right. that having the same situation right. to where they don't know how or who to talk. And really, there's no set way. There's no book written. Right. There's nothing there. So you had to learn how to really do that right. on your own. And the only way you can do this is by surrendering to each other and talking. Right. So what would you say to somebody that's having the same situation now? Um, and I think what the whole purpose of this meeting and this conversation and conversing mm -hmm. is that we understand in life that number one is we're not all going to agree. True. <laughs> true. True. But it's the basis of having conversation where people are listening true. Um, and actually looking at what's at hand. And what's at hand for me is a relationship with my father. And I don't want to lose that. Regardless of whatever I was before or whatever I am now, I did not want to lose that relationship with my father. Um, he might have disagreed with some things I did. I might have disagreed with some things he did. But knowing that I have the love of my father, that's something that I had to do. So what I would tell the listeners out here right now, regardless of whether you had a father there or you had some type of parental figure, whether it was an aunt, whether it was a foster parent, you have to, and I'm, you know, let, me, let me stop. You don't have to. Somebody has to start. I wouldn't say you, somebody. The thing is, this is for parents out there. This is for, uh, for to children out there. This is for somebody that is going through right now. Just stop and start thinking. How can I be accountable for having this conversation with my father? How can I be how can I be accountable for having this conversation with who my parental figure is? Let's stop and think that because one thing is where this has brought us right now is to the point of looking at he's accountable for being a father. I'm accountable for being a son. He's accountable for being an adult. I'm accountable for being an adult. And together, we have to converse because it will always be some type of misunderstanding if we didn't or um, what's that? A assumptions. Right. So I don't want my father to assume anything. That's why I'm very candid and very truthful with him. A lot of things, some things he probably didn't want to hear. <laughs> but I'm very, very candid with him because my dad been with me for a long time. Even when I, you know, did some bad things and I call him late, late at night and say, look, dad, you know, I'm here, but I, I, I want you to know I'm okay. And he'd be like, well, look, call me when you get home. So it was that what made me to the point of, and that's why, and I'm just going to go back to when I was in relationships and people saying, why are you always calling checking up on me? I'm looking like, that's something that my dad did. So I like that because guess what? I might be somewhere lonely right. or I might be somewhere dealing with depression. True. I might be somewhere just out crazy. True. But to hear a comforting voice, True. it kind of bring you back to reality and say, oh my gosh, he really, really cares about me. And he'd be like, you know, just call me when you get home. And he'd be like, make sure you call me when you get home. And that was comforting to me. So what I'm going back to is number one is Take the time to start evaluating yourself. Right, yourself. Take the time to evaluate yourself because it's not that bad. I'll tell you another situation. Um, a, one of my um, youth people had a, um, a blow up with his, his uh, mother. His, mother his, his mother's sister, which was his aunt, had just passed away. So they were both angry with each other. Wow. 
And, you know, some things were said, and his, his mom put him out. But one thing I told him, I said, well, look, let me go and go ahead and get you a hotel room. And you stay in the hotel for some time until you and your mom cool down. Y'all need some separation for a minute. And what I, I did with that is said, I need you to talk to your mom as you were her son and not her friend. Mm -hmm. And that relationship changed because... And y'all need to talk about what is going on in that, in that life. Because none of y'all have talked about your aunt and her sister passing away. And some of that conversation was never had. And that's what the whole blow was about. Everybody's angry because the aunt passed away and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, her sister passed away. And no one was conversating. So there was a lot of assumptions there. Exactly. Nobody to conversate to right. talk about what they felt so they would understand the assumption exactly. and then come to a conclusion. Right. And in that conclusion, it turned out to be a great relationship that, yes, we need to talk about that. Talk to me if you're angry with me. It's okay. It's okay. But even in that, now you brought up another good point because I know some people have uh, parallels that they be in conversation mm -hmm. that they don't talk about, but learning how do you cross the line of parallelization to why you get an understanding because they, they both had an aunt and a sister and they were, they were going like that. So how do they cross? Or how do they bring the two points together? And so, and I'm glad you asked. The parallel is this. I already knew that that young man was a hothead. Mm -hmm. So I had to separate that right then and there because basically it could have blown up to something bigger. Mm -hmm. So I told him, get some time. And as we talked, I was like, what is it that you guys are going through? I had already knew that his aunt passed and his, his mom, um, that was her sister. So I was like, what are you going through? And I said, might be some other things that were thrown into it and things like that. So she was like, just get your stuff and get out. So he told me about it. So I told him, stop writing these things down. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, if you don't write them down, you're going to forget. Right. Uh, and then that way you can have a better thought process when you go back and talk to your mom. And the thing is, like I told him was, Start using I words, I statements. Hmm. I statements mean, hey, when you told me to get out, this is how I felt. Right. And then she can come back, well, I told you to get out because I felt like this too as well. Okay. So that's the parallel. But then again, we still have to take away that angry. True. We still got to break down that wall, that barrier, because everybody's in the heat of the moment and everybody's shouting. So how are we going to get to that point where it's calm? So sometimes de-escalating means somebody have to be removed. Right. But so. just like my dad always says, somebody got to have some sense. Yes. So in any relationship, any conversation, yes. somebody got to have a, a deciding factor to have, uh, to move to really talking about it. Right. So yeah, that, that's what works out. Now, is there anything I'm um, going not changing the subject, but I'm going back to you again mm -hmm. to say that is, is there anything that you feel that you need to experience or that you haven't experienced that you want to experience? Um, I think for me, yeah. <laughs> anything that I haven't experienced, I have experienced a lot. Um, for those who don't know, um, I was in the U.S. Navy. I am an ex-veteran, a Navy veteran. Um, I've experienced a lot, but some things that I want to experience is um, definitely, um, for those who don't know, I went to Israel, Egypt, Jerusalem, Turkey, Bulgaria, Ukraine. I went a lot of places, so I want to experience the whole world. Mm. Um, I actually want to go into synagogues and temples in the different areas and actually worship with them because I want that whole different experience for his religions and things like that too as well. And that is going to draw me close and actually get closer to God because the thing is, in the Bible it says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall Amen. confess. Amen. And even in other religions when we think or assume that they're doing something right, you got to look in the Bible. It actually started calling out some of the names of Jesus, Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nieces, and things like that. So sometimes we're, we don't relate to that because that's not what we were taught. Right. So I want to actually have that experience um, of traveling. 
But even in traveling, there is something about oneself that you have to evolve or open up or surrender to in mm -hmm. order to receive. Mm -hmm. So you can travel mm -hmm. and not receive. Right. So what would you tell people, even the fact that you went to Bul Bulgaria and mm -hmm. all the places, out of those experiences, what did you gain from those? Oh, wow. <laughs> Out of those experiences, let me tell you what I gained. I was actually 22 to 24. Um, I actually did the pilgrimage of Jesus um, in Jerusalem. I saw the Great Wall in Mecca. Um, and actually putting the notes in the wall and all that stuff. So one of my, my notes are in the wall. Um, and prayers in the wall that they, they, they uh, in, the, in that wall. Um, so me and my DT1, who don't know, um, dental tech, first class, um, we went on the um, pilgrimage, um, the Jesus walk, and where he got crucified at, and we did all that, saw the Red Sea, the Sea of Galilee, went to Cairo, Egypt, and all that. Um, actually going in the caves and the tombs and all that, that was a spiritual awakening for me then. Um, I'm telling you, hair stood up on my back, my arms and everything that I'm sitting here at 21, 22 years old, experiencing the walk of Jesus Christ and the things that he actually did. And just walking in those caves and walking in that was so amazing. Mm -hmm. Some of the other things that I picked up, just people are actually nice overseas. <laughs> they are much much nicer than these people in the United States of America. I was afraid to come back to the United States of America um, because I had such a great experience, and I can tell you an experience I had in Turkey, um, and it's a lot when you go over overseas, is um, you have the um, panhandlers, mm -hmm. and it was Istanbul, Turkey. Istanbul or Istanbul, Turkey. Um, it was two little panhandlers. The little boys were probably about 9 and 11. They showed me all of Turkey. Wow. I we were walking all day long. I fed them. I gave them the Turkish coins and all that stuff afterwards and thanked them for the tour. When I tell you, those little boys knew the ins and outs of that town. <laughs> and I took them to a restaurant. And I said, well, what restaurant do you want to eat in? And they was like, oh, we can go in there. I was like, hey, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a veteran. Uh, not a veteran. I'm a sailor, so I'm sure they'll let me in. And I'm just going to tell them you guys are with me. But they was like, we're not dressed right. I said, look, you're with me. Let's call in. And I said, you know, talk to the uh, Mater D. Uh, and I said, um, hey, these are my kids. And I came overseas to see my children. So I want to have dinner here with them. And we sat and ate. And just the expression on their face to know that I don't know whether they were homeless or whatever. But the expression on the face brought me so much joy and I think they just never seen somebody do that that was very had a kindred spirit and do that for them so it was, it was just amazing I think if anything they probably would have got back on the ship with me and went back home <laughs> now you, you mentioned that you were afraid to come back to the USA now this is the land of they say plenty and you could whatever you do you can arise but here you are over in another country, enjoying those uh, humorous times, mm -hmm. or I would say honorable times, mm -hmm. and they had to come back here. So what was the difference between there and the United States? The difference is, I think, in the United States, we've become too commercialized. Um, family traditions were very prevalent over there. Uh, when I was in Italy, they had what they call siestas. Siestas was when everybody take off for two hours during lunchtime, and you go home and you have lunch with your family. Uh, breakfast together with the family, lunch together with the family, and dinner, and everybody was there. Wow. We're not doing that anymore. Um, because everybody's working, everybody's going, everybody's doing this, somebody got to go to school, somebody got to work, somebody got to do this, and somebody got to do that. So it was, it was quite different. And I want, I like that family tradition that they had. Um, 
they were very courteous. Right. Um, and they were very just they kept it in to line where courteous, um, genuine, mm -hmm. and they were they get excited to see an African American male over there. So those were the experiences that I had, and I had some great experiences. And I, I'm glad you brought that up to the point. I went to Thailand, mm -hmm. and the people over there were different, and, and I associated with the fact of them being oh, genuine to their God, mm -hmm. or in a humble sense. And when here, everybody got met a different God, right? And they are, like you say, commercialized. Yes. And they are very forward because everybody's trying to gain. Right. So it's not no courtesy. It's more or less grab and get. Yes. So I, I can associate with that. And I'm one of the people in Facebook Live yes. to understand there is a tremendous difference overseas than here. Yes. Very now, big but we can still acquire. Yes. Those things. Yes. So that, that's some. But now, explain to them, Facebook Live, what your podcast live is. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the Rise Creating Your Voice is given an avenue and a platform for various subject matters. Um, various subject matters being that it would be season, seasons and episodes. Um, various subject matters. Um, and we're looking at um, pro uh, promoting education, communication, and always being motivational. That is what this podcast is about, is um, empowering people to be motivational. Mm -hmm. Empowering people to want to grow because we understand, and that's the education piece of it. When you empower people to grow, that means they have the desire to learn. You can't, if you don't learn anything, you, you can't grow. Um, and the communication piece is that I do understand social media is very rampant. I do understand that people watch TVs. I understand that game box and Xbox and all that stuff too as well. But I want everybody to start taking the time out to have conversations like this right now. So this is the avenue for people to start having these conversations where you take the time out and schedule the conversation. If you can't have one, schedule it. Right. And just talk. We either want to text. We either want to not call. And that's what we have got out of the business of. What if iPhone never was around? What if iPads were never around? How would we react? One thing I like to tell people, and when they're being judgmental and things like that, just imagine if you were... Uh, deaf and blind. How would you interact? Wow. That's deep. <laughs> Give me three words uh, that would, would describe uh, the rise. Three words that would describe the rise would be communication, education, and motivation. I'm always empowering people. I'm always empowering people. I'm always empowering people. I want to support people. But then again, let me tell you, people got to have the desire to support themselves too as well. And then support, that's why I never say help, I say assist. Because help means that they don't want to do anything. So when they offer and say, oh, can you help me? I say, no, you might want to change that word to assist because once you assist, that means I'm doing something, you're doing something. But then again, when you have a problem, guess what? Have three possible solutions. So if you don't provide three possible solutions, then that's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of going back a little bit, I, I need you to give an understanding to Facebook Live, the, Jer the Judah Bernard, well, the Jeremy Bernard before Judah Bernard. Yes. The spirituality of it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Facebook Live, you coming up with some hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Are you guys ready? I'm going to do y'all a short version. <laughs> I'm going to start off with, the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Um, Sometimes, well, you know what? We know when God is calling us. Um, but we choose not to answer sometimes. Um, and he's going to keep going <laughs> until he actually gets you. Um, either way, whether it be by life or by death. Um, and I think uh, my father knows always that I say for the wages of sin is death. Um, I was at a very, very low point. Um, and I know God was talking to me at that particular time. And, you know, sometimes you got to hit rock bottom. Um, and I wouldn't say I was at rock bottom, but I was at my lowest point where I was looking like, what's next? Um... I knew what I had to do. I knew what I needed to do. But I had to desire. I had to have the desire to do it. I got that desire. I wanted and need God in my life every day. I had to have him in my life every day. Because I saw that what Jeremy was doing was chasing everything. What Jeremy was doing was chasing money. What Jeremy was doing was doing that lifestyle. What Jeremy was doing is drinking alcohol. What Jeremy was doing, and it led me nowhere because guess what? I did not have happiness. Okay. Although everybody, let me tell you right now, mask off. Wow. Mask Real. off. Real. Take your mask off. Wow. Because let me tell you, the number one thing is we've all suffered trauma True. in some form. True. We've all suffered some hurt. True. We've all suffered some loved one doing something wrong to us. True. We've all gone through something where we're holding on to and we can't relinquish it. <clears throat> so the one thing I had to do for Jeremy was release myself. I had to take Jeremy away. Jeremy had to fly out the equation because Jeremy became the common denominator in everything. Okay. Um, in that removing Jeremy, how did I remove Jeremy? I start writing. Um, I have books and journals of a lot of things that I needed to do and do correctly. Um, I had it in a left column. In that left column, I know if I want to end alcohol, how do I need to do that? Drinking alcohol. Um, if I knew I had to want to end the lifestyle, what I had to do. If I had to, uh, you know, do the will of God, what I had to do. So in that, that middle column, I was putting out the things that I wanted to do. And in that, you only know what you're capable and what you can do. So that's how I came up with a conversion rate. My conversion rate was rocking at about 75, 85. Mm -hmm. And conversion rate meaning that I wanted to be more Christ-like. Mm -hmm. And I wanted that to be at 100%, not 85. <laughs> um, I wanted that to be at a point where I know that I'm going to have eternal life, not think I have eternal life. And I no longer just believe in God. I start doing the works. Okay. I start fasting. I start praying. I start delivering my, my messages to God through prayer. I start reading the Bible. I start doing the things that I need to do. I stop drinking. I stop my lifestyle. And those are the things that I told him. I said, God, I want you to remove these things right now. I don't want you to remove them tomorrow. I need to remove them right now. And he did just that. And so I praised him. I didn't know what was going on at that particular time. But then he said, wow, you have really did the whole conversion rate and you, you obeyed me. You did the actual thing that I needed you to do so you could become your next level. Now, the fact that you 
you said you did those. That was a desire you 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 saw what you you saw you was at a wall, you saw you was at rock bottom, you saw you weren't going anywhere. Right. So how did you develop the desire? What what caused you to desire? The cause is the will of God. That was the cause. The cause was let me do the will of God because it's not Jeremy's will. Okay. It's God's will. True. And that's one thing I had to remember that everything that we was already we was already given a purpose before we were born. True. We was given a purpose. True. And I know what my purpose is. My purpose is to make sure that I do the necessary things and the will of God through my purpose. And so in that, that's how my name changed to Judah. Judah means praise. Also, because of the city of Judah too as well, which was Salvation City, and he offered me salvation. And that's how I can, that, that's how that was bestowed upon me and saying because of my whole 360, 180, Christ-like and just like, whoa, it blew my mind. And I was looking like, I'm really doing this. This I'm doing the will of God. And now, with me doing the will of God, that I fell in love with God. And mind you, I've never been in love before. <laughs> never been in love. So it's a happy feeling for me. It's an understanding that I know who I am, and that's why I asked people in the first season one, episode one, defining you. The de definition of me is I'm an almost servant. That's who I am. And that's the will of God because we're servants to God. True. We're nothing else but servants. True. And that's my de defining um, who I am. Wow. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, I've, I've learned some things today. I, I know we've talked. We've had our conversation. But uh, what would you want the listeners out there to know about Jeremy, Judah, Bernard? What I want the listeners to know that after you've done all you can, just stay. Just stay. Um, in that, uh, what does that stand mean for you? I, I don't know. Every episode you will see homework. Every episode you will see different things. We need to start defining ourselves and what our purpose is in God's will. True. Not my father's will, mm -hmm. but God's will. True. Not my sister, but no, no, nobody, anybody else. And as you see, and I like to um, thank my gifter for gifting me this shirt. It says, but God, but God. But God. And um, that, that the person that gifted me this was Kim Kennedy Washington at the Candy Shop Boutique out in um, Ridge, uh, Floodwood, Mississippi. So Lakeland Drive. So I want to thank her for this because I said, look, but God, this is what God has made. And what I like to tell people is, number one is, we have to understand in that but God looks at this. Mm -hmm. I don't, no longer do I want to say, oh, we all fall short. Well, yeah, we're human. We fall short. True. Uh, in that, I want people to say, I don't want to fall short anymore. How about we just do right? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so? I'm telling you, and I'm going to keep telling you this is, it says, for the wages of sin is death. That's it, man. No sin is greater than the other. I can't say if you're sinning or not. That's between you and God. True. I know what my sin was. <laughs> so that's why I have to continue doing what I have to do for God because it's not my will. And I only worry about me. I can't worry about my father. True. I can't worry about my sister. I can't worry about my family. I'm not of this world anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's why I look at my whole, 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 whole world is full of doing God's will. Mm -hmm. Making sure that I'm healing generational curses that was restored. 
uh, making sure that I'm doing things that of God and making sure that I'm taking it to the height that God uh, wants me to do because it's his will, not my will. True. That's Judah Bernard providing communication, educational, and motivational subject matter and very subject matters on the podcast and actually not even really, not even asking for donations, not even asking for, this is something free, free stuff, free information, free, free, free information, free. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I can't say, I can't say what I won't become, but God is calling me on different levels. But what you will remember, if you don't remember anything else, I'm an humble servant. I don't like titles. I don't like titles. I'm Judah. I'm Judah Bernard. That's what I want to be. I want to be an humble servant of God and just do his will. That's it. Very good. You know, um, my very first, my very first sermon, if you feel like I do, but it's your purpose. God had really embarked on me about surrendering and really being genuine and knowing the real him. Mm -hmm. And when people really know him for who he is and know yourself for who you are, right. that's when it becomes real. Yes. And I, I do want to uh, say that uh, Jeremy did finish his, uh, <laughs> his membership class for Greater Tabernacle Ministry. So we want to present him with his certificate of uh, completion for the Greater Tabernacle Ministry Missionary Missionary Greater <laughs> Tabernacle Ministries. We want to let you know we appreciate you. We adore you. We are, we saying thank, thank you, you for being a, a part of Greater Tabernacle Ministry. See, yeah, that's Jeremy B. Sims. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for me and for everyone. This podcast, this Facebook Live was done because basically in this current pandemic, we have a lot of African-American um, American things going on True. that um, don't want to mention, but I will. Black Lives Matter and things like that. But let's come together and be human kind. How about we be human and be kind to one another and be bold, be human and be kind. Right. Because what we are struggling with that people are not understanding what's going on is not your battle. True. The battle is the Lord's. True. <laughs> He'll fight your battles. Not saying that you can't go out and have peaceful protests, um, do marches and walks, but understand and get a meaning of what you're doing. True. Don't go out there because Johnny blow your horn and said, let's go out here and protest and you don't know why you're out there. That's what caused confusion. True. That's what caused anger. anger. That's what caused anguish. And then it becomes rioting, um, loitering, and other things. And we still have things and other things going on, but sometimes we have to remember who's in charge. True. And be in charge of oneself. Yes. I mean, that, that's the most important thing. Know who you are and whose you are and how to carry yourself. That's the main thing. Because everybody's going to be out there to institute whatever they want out Yes. Of. Everybody's going to be throwing in things and saying things, but you got to make sure who you know who you are. And don't have a hidden agenda. <laughs> um, Some of them have hidden agenda. True that, true that. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you're going to be genuine, if you're going to be real, then there won't be anything hidden. So it, the idea of it is Learn who you are. Yes. Uh, uh, I guess we, we, I guess a good place to put uh, Second Chronicle. Yes. The seventh chapter and the fourth Fourteen verse. The, if my people who are called by my name mm -hmm. would humble themselves humble and pray. And pray. Seek my face. Seek my face. And turn from your wicked way. And that's the key important part. Yes. Turn from your <laughs> wicked way. <laughs> then, until you do those four things. Yes. Be humble. Pray. pray seek. seek and turn. and turn. Then you'll hear from heaven. And I'll heal. You. He'll forgive your sins. Yes, forgive your sins. And then. And then. Heal the land. But then again, in surrender, we still have to do the works too That's as well. Uh, and surrendering is a part of, it's a process. It's that, it's that. Uh, and in that process, know that 
it's not going to happen instantly. <laughs> it's going to happen by process, and that's why I come up with the conversion rate table. Okay. Sometimes you go be at 100, and you kind of go back okay. 75. Right. But know that you determined to reach 100. Right. Or whatever your, your goal is. Sure. But set goals for yourself as a, as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Set goals for yourself as spiritual. Set goals for yourself, whatever religion or whatever you're in, you got to set a goal. Mm -hmm. You got to mm -hmm. set a goal. You got to set a goal. Um, I think one of my goals were that I didn't want to continue to serve man. And I talked about it with you about um, having my earthly resume. Just tear that up. We can go to school. <laughs> we can go and do this and perform for man. Right. But how are we performing for God? How are we performing for God? We can go put on, like I said, here I go again, homework, everybody take your mask off. <laughs> mask off. Because we go get dolled up and everything, and guess what we're doing? We're hiding all that sorrow, that pain in the inside, but you want everybody to look at you, oh, I'm happy. You're really not. <laughs> don't have no peace. You got, don't have any peace. But the thing is, in doing that, you're entitling yourself. You're, 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 you're going into the realization of, no, I really don't have peace. Mm -hmm. Is that, knowing that, is that a good thing? Yes. Is it going to bring you a little heartache? Yes. But guess what? Like I do, I have a lot of, at my home in Maryland, I have a lot of whiteboards around my house. So I like to jot things down so I can go back and remember. And when I, when I go back to it and I've already done it, I erase it. Guess what that means for me? I have a brand new, I, I have a clean spot to put something else. <laughs> but I've accomplished something. Right. So start celebrating those small wins. If it's just you go and do something that was so small as far as cleaning up your kitchen. Celebrate that small win. That's true. But some of us are so in such a big bump, we have to take those small steps. True. We got to take those small wins and turn them to big wins where at the end of the day that you'll gain something by doing it. Mm -hmm. And you find yourself, because God don't like a dirty house. Mm -hmm. he, don't like, he can't dwell in a dirty house. He can't dwell in a dirty, dirty soul either. <laughs> True that, man. So, well, are there any questions? Uh, any, any, I'm going to Facebook Live. Yeah. Questions from there? I mean, if you have any more questions, we can. Well, we can be. See any questions? I'm gonna look over here. If you guys don't mind, I'll look over my here. If you have any more questions, because you've already imparted wisdom to your listeners and stuff, so I, we've done a lot of things that I I had questions about, and the questions that I had was spirituals that you've asked already. So I really don't have anything else. But I mean, if I, you just need me to just go into my spiritual bank to pull out something, I can. <laughs> You can go in your spiritual bank. <laughs> Hold on. Why did I look at that? I don't know nothing. Ah, go ahead. What would be uh, your recommendation mm -hmm. to those individuals that don't write? Or, you know, some people don't drive. You know, everybody's got their own little thing they do for it, trying to remember stuff. Uh, some people, I, I'm not a, per, per se, uh, journal keeper. But then, you know, I might jot some things down and sometimes my, my words might get cold. So what do you... <laughs> so what would you what would you say to those people? Would you mind repeating that? I was just trying to get that Facebook so I can see the question. What, what would you suggest to those individuals that don't journal or write? Uh, how would you suggest that they... Do it? Yes. You have a smartphone. It's what they call in there, a voice memo. Yes. You can just talk in there. <laughs> you can get your small recorder and just talk in there. Um, some people have those smart cars and do voice memos too as well. Talk in there. Um, one thing is I empower people if they don't want to write, that they dictate a lot of things as far as they, they voice things. You have a notes. In your um, in your in your iPad or your iPhone, um, I'm not sure what Android has, but they should have it as well. Um, but that's the thing is, and let me let me let me be honest with you guys. I have a great memory, but I want our young generation to be a little bit more focused. 
I, I don't know what's going on because they just seem to zone out easily. <laughs> and they don't remember a lot. So I don't know what that's causing or anything like that. Uh, but I know somebody had a request on here, and I'm going to probably give it to <laughs> my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, Charity Jones said, I just want to see his face. It's the song I hear you singing as a child. Speak. You talking to the right man, your dad. Amazing Grace. Huh? Amazing Grace. Oh, Amazing Grace for who? Dad yeah, or me? For Charity. I know it's good to you. Yeah. Oh, he, she want to hear you sing Amazing Grace. Yes. Wow. So, Dad, yeah. <laughs> good. That's good. That's what I just saw. <laughs> 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 so, I'll come yeah. on the harmonization part. <laughs> Oh, amazing grave, how sweet the, the sound that enjoyed that. I mean, hey, I love to hear him sing, and I'm hoping I don't get any song selections out there. <laughs> she said, thank you, dear. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for asking. She's listening all the way from Columbus, Georgia. Yeah. Wow. And Charity, I will sing um, uh, I Shall Wear a Crown for you. <clears throat> Ooh. Ooh. I shall wear a crown. I shall wear a crown. When it's all over. When shall see his face. I shall see his face.
Amen. Woo! <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Our powers up in the E flat. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions? <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you. This was this was extraordinary, right? I didn't know what they expect. What? Um, what was that song we used to sing all the time, Dan? Mm -hmm. Was it trying to get everybody to sing? Yeah. Is that? Do you no. want to try that one? No. Oh, okay. Because. Uh, we got all the parts. Go We got two so What end form was? I was the high part. I know that. Let's do two verses and then tomorrow. Jesus said, "Here I stand." Woo. You I remember? Don't know. I don't remember. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, good. You started off right. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Jesus said, here I stand, won't you please let me in, and you said, I will tomorrow. I will, but tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, I give my life tomorrow, I thought about today, oh, but it's so much easier to say tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promise. Don't let this moment slip away. <laughs> but tomorrow will never give the way to Y'all gotta understand his voice is a little red. Oh, real low. Wow, that brings us some fun memories. Yes. I'm trying to really uh, incorporate. You, yeah, I'm trying to. Yes. Antoine was the guitar. guitar. Maurice on the drum. I was piano. Yeah, James Jr. was the bass. Yeah, guitar. and Teresa Sposa did organ or tambourine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Something. <laughs> yeah, so nobody really did anything. I did. Do the piano. I tried. Oh. <laughs> Amen. You still got the guitar at the house, man. Right. So we got good times for sale. <laughs> Amen. Go offer up. <laughs> wow. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. But it, those were good times. You know, uh, it was, uh, what's the guy's name? Talk piano man. Randolph Watson. Randolph Watson. Who's the guy who teaches him? Bass guitar, the guy with Clyde Nichols. Who was Clyde Nichols? Oh, um, the guy that played for the ship. Played the band. I here. can't remember his name. I want to say Gus or something like that, but I, I can't remember his real name. Wow, because it was at they had a little studio. Yes. Okay. Wow. Any other questions you guys have for us out there? God, we was on. I, I, I started. <laughs> Amen. Dad started reminiscing real easily. <laughs> But it's good reminiscing. Um, go back down memory lane. That would be a great time to have some conversation with things that you guys used to do and things that brought back great memories because that could be a great segue for conversation too as well. True. Amen. So, Julie. So any other questions out in Facebook Live land? Oh, Jesus. Uh, they want to... <laughs> I know who this is that's requesting this. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. One more time. One more time. 
One more time. One more time. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. 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 I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. That's the shout out to you. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. <laughs> One more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. Are there any other requests? As you see, we're doing a small little uh, duet. <laughs> My dad got a great ba bass boy, so I love when he sings. So. It's going to. <clears throat> it's not going, it's just going deeper. <laughs> so we got our good water here. I want to definitely give a shout out to um, the girl, the, the young lady who gifted me this. It says, But God, uh, which was Kim Kennedy Washington. Her um, place is the candy shop out in, um, off of Lakeland Drive. And I want to say 8090 Dur Burton Street somewhere. She's open at 1 30. The only thing I do is look at Facebook. Kim Kennedy Washington, and she gifted me this, and I'd like to thank her for that. Any more questions, Father? Not that I know of, but I was trying to look and see. Mm -hmm. Any questions from Facebook Live? Are you guys enjoying this? And, and what? Um, maybe I could ask one question. What would you tell them as a father? I'm good. Oh, you, you got one? Yeah. Okay. What would you tell the listeners as a father for those who, and I want people to understand that we understand that everybody did not grow up with their biological father. Some people had single mothers. Some people had grandparents and things like that. But as a parent, what would you tell them um, about just rearing their children or keeping conversation or communication live as a parent? Wow. Now that's just, I'm not going to expect to be on the spot, but on the spot I am. <laughs> it is ironic that you would ask that because I didn't have a book to go by when I got you were five and didn't know what to do, but I knew that I loved you and I wanted you all to have opportunity. Right. So I wanted to make sure that y'all did that. So it was just really just opening up and just being genuine and real. Uh, it, it, you, you have to have a, uh, I say some guidelines, you have to have some rules in order to maintain some things. If you don't, you will have no top or bottom. Right. You got to have a top or bottom. Yes. If, 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 if you don't, things will get out of hand or things will go south. Right. So if you got a top and a bottom, that means you got some leverage to where you know how far to let it go or how far not to go. So I would suggest, a matter of fact, I would employ that you do have guidelines. And some folks might call them rude. Some folks might call them, uh, I don't know. You, you might have all kind of words or definition for them, but it's actually guidelines that you go by. That's what I would suggest. Because without that, I don't know what I've done with the five. Because, I mean, all five had wise minds and they wanted to be themselves, and I, I tried to let them go to as far as I could let them go, but sometimes you had to pull them in. <laughs> pull them in. <laughs> now, how would you, this is a question for you, okay. how would you want everybody to remember you? Wow. How would I want everybody to remember me? Um, one thing is, as we're here discussing this, I want to be the legacy to start um, positive communication. I want to be the legacy of talking and forgiving because we understand that um, as Christians, as spiritual beings, we, sh we ought to forgive. Sure. We ought. I say you have to, but we ought to we're forgive. Required to forgive. Yes. And we're required to forgive, as, as, as Dad put it. 
that, and a lot of people don't do that. Right. And it says if you have an alt with your brother, right. so take it to your brother. Right. And most him people alone. don't do that. And him alone. And him alone. Not the one next to him. No. Oh, you don't take it across the street and tell the neighbor, <laughs> and then it took one all around the block, right. and then it gets back to you all wrong. <laughs> um, and I think uh, uh, my uh, uh, my sister, when she was in kindergarten, uh, um, she had this thing that said, telegraph, telephone, tell a woman. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's how I remember a lot of things because I had to practice with her all the time. <laughs> what was the teacher name? Miss uh, uh, Brady. Brady. Miss Brady. Yeah, she, that was, she said yes. that all the time. Yes. Uh, so, telephone, telegraph, tell a woman. Yes. Yeah. And that was memorable to me that my sister did the pageant and I was always in the pageants as an escort or helping out in the pageants and things like that. And, you know, my sister always, you going to help me? I was like, look, I need you to do it like this. And through how her tenure at Kent Elementary as she won so many pageants, I was like her pageant coach. Okay. <laughs> so that was very inspirational for me that she took some of the direction that I gave her to as well, and she was phenomenal in most things that she okay. did. Uh, and I was just thankful that she just did what I said. Okay. <laughs> wow. I got the choice. So that that was a great part of growing too as well. So. My, my. So I, I want to be I want to be learned as that legacy, um, and, and, and not just saying. In knowing who Judah Bernard is, that in my newness. Mm -hmm. And in my new spirit, in my new mind, in my new soul, and doing the will of God, that you knew Judah as doing the works of God and doing the will of God and actually providing motivation and not where the point where it's boastful or pride, but as an humble servant. Mm -hmm. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other comments? I'm just going to tell you if I go around the house. Mm-mm. We good. Uh, what time is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they know it's so late. <laughs> so, what I want to emphasize, did you want to leave them with any parting words? Uh, only to learn to surrender to God. Yes. Because God is looking for true worshipers that worship Him in spirit and truth. And I try to exemplify that all my life. I'm not saying I've did it, but I tried to. And that's what I want to leave with everybody, is to put forth a genuine effort and surrender to the Holy Spirit to where he can lead and guide you. Thank you. And that's surrender to the Holy Spirit where he can lead and guide you. But not only surrendering, I need you to do the works too as well. If you really will. After you surrender, yeah. you got to do the works. <laughs> you, you can't it's sort of like it goes dot, 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 dot. <laughs> That's like going to work. When you go to work, you got to get up, you got to brush your teeth, you got to wash your face, you got to wash your body. Whether you drive or whether you ride the metro or whatever you ride, you, you, you have to get to work. Do you put on your good face or do you put on your face? <laughs> so mask off even when you're going to work. So mask off for Christ and give him that, that pain. Oh. That suffering, yeah. all of that, because he's not going to come into that. The, the jealousy, the hate, something that happened right. when you were three years old. You got to get rid of that. Something that happened when you were five years old. Right. If you're yeah. mad at your brother or your sister, get rid, you got to get rid of all of that. Yeah. Um, so the reason, like, and I'll state again, the reason why I did this is because I understand that we're in a dilemma in the African-American community. Mm -hmm where we don't conversate anymore. And, 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 and where I see in research, I see domestic violence has increased during this situation. Um, suicide has increased. Mental health has increased because people are isolated and things like that. But sometimes in that isolation, you still have your, your people that you live with. Right. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm going to say this real candid. Maybe some people need to reevaluate their situation that they're currently living in. <laughs> and maybe it's just not the right one for you. True. But have that conversation. Got to have it. Don't, don't shout and scream. And when alcohol and other things are involved, right. different things happen. Stop shouting and screaming, but have conversation. Before you start drinking. <laughs>
But don't drink it all. Let's just have a conversation. Right, I mean, you know, you now, if y'all resolve it. something, celebrate the small win. Have a drink. <laughs> a little tinsy, wincy drink. Maybe ginger ale. <laughs> or ginger beer. Whatever your choice of libation. Um, but make sure it, it's alcohol free. <laughs> um, in that, um, I wanted to definitely salute my father. Uh, because he's been a great instrument in our lives. Um, and I definitely want to do this because somehow generations after us will see this. True. It's going in the cloud somewhere and generation will see that this is a genuine relationship. And I want to definitely emphasize that it's a lot of people that don't even show their biological people. I mean, biological father. Um, most celebrities were adopted or they don't even, you don't even know who their biological father is or their biological mother or their biological parent. Why? So it's a void there. It's a void in their lives. It's a void. I don't want no void. I want my parental love that I'm supposed to get. <laughs> I want that. And if it's not a situation where it's fixable or, or resolvable, somebody has to be the bigger person. True. And in that, me and my father were bigger people and I'm an adult now and I'm not going to tell my age because I want y'all to think I'm still young. <laughs> Dad, don't say Take a face off. <laughs> oh, my mask <laughs> came off because guess what? I'm still young. Look. Uh, I just want people to understand that in this dilemma or this pandemic we're in, that we're having the opportunity as African American men to relate to each other. True. One thing that my dad taught me was, it's okay to cry. True. I know a lot of men say, oh, you cry, you're a punk. I'm that punk then. I'm sorry. My dad has cried in front of me, so I enjoy that because he's showing his emotions. True. And that's his true emotion. True emotion. So, and it's not that he's revealing himself. It's that's who he is. I'm letting off the emotion. He's letting off the emotion. Right. You have to let off things sometimes. You better let off. Um, but given that in our society that a lot of African American men just can't talk to each other. Well then that's why they suicide rates going up. You hold it inside or try to keep it inside. It's gonna break out somewhere. Yeah. So let it out with tears, let it out with shouting, let it out with conversation. Not with guns. No. Not with fighting. That's the wrong way. Yes, yes. So, so we want you to do the right way, expressing yourself verbally and making sure that you're having that conversation when people no, hurt you. No doubt. And have it in a fashionable way where each one are able to give their opinion. Even if it's the wrong English. <clears throat> English doesn't matter when you conversate. Right. It matters when you're projecting before folk. Right. But if you're talking among each other, then you just talk. Right. So make sure you talk. And use choice select words and not dropping the F bombs all the time. True that. <laughs> so we have to remember that too as well. That's true. In um, that, I want, if you're watching this and you're an African American male, is I want to charge you with doing homework. True. Um, whether you're a father, a brother, an uncle, sister, cousin, or whatever. Um, I don't know where you are in your life, but this is the opportunity for you to start having these conversations. True. This is the time to employ you and charge you in doing homework, at least having conversations with male figures that are around you or are in your life or in your surrounding circle and things like that so we can get a greater bond True. in the African-American community. And that's saying African-American man, man up. Man up means conversate. I mean, allow yourself to be vulnerable, allow yourself to be uh, spiritual, allow yourself to come out to where you can be seen. And there's no harm in that. To be open. Yeah. Just be open. So as I leave you and as my father leave you, understand that we want you to, as usual, tell a friend, tell a foe, Tell your spouse if you have one. Hey, tell everyone. We'll be podcasting on tomorrow with Micah Jane Reed. And we'll actually have Katie Burkhart. And we'll be talking about being healthy. What does healthy look like for you? We don't know. 
You have to see for yourself what healthy looks like for you. We can give you tools and resources all day long, but you have to know, and we're, we're too busy always want people to give us stuff and then we take on, but we want you to start defining yourself and actually knowing what being healthy is for you. So we're going to talk about what being healthy is for you. There are two life coaches, and what they're going to do is talk about some of the life coaching experiences and also talk about their life experience. And what I'll be giving is being the wisdom dialoguing, um, invoking wisdom and providing wisdom because God provides provisions. So I'm giving you wisdom as far as what being healthy is to me. Looking forward to seeing you on tomorrow. That Enjoy. is at 3 o'clock Central Standard Time. And we'll actually be on Zoom and Facebook Live. So we're looking forward to seeing you. And turn on those notifications.